Well, look, I'd have to say the, uh, the top 20 stocks in Australia, yes, X the resources. You know, most of those industrial companies do have you know, steady, predictable cash flows. They might not be dynamic growth. And I, I think uh, what some analysts are knocking them down on is that because it's not dynamic growth, that they're X growth. But I think they should take uh, a view of the world. The world is struggling to grow. You know, the, the developed world is struggling to grow. And not without stimulation. It's got negative interest rates in, in big parts of the bond market. Uh, we've had massive fiscal deficits. We've got manipulation of currency. We've got oil prices and energy prices down. With all that stimulation, there's not much significant growth occurring. So to knock Australian companies down and saying they're not growing greatly, I think is missing the whole point. It's not a high growth world. So you've got to go back to quality and quality of cash flows and the compounding of returns. Now, I think the leading Australian companies can produce that. So long as they're not dictated to by markets demanding yield, rather than being patient and looking for reinvestment and growing earnings from reinvestment. And I think that's where the uh, system in Australia, and it goes back to the franking system, it's, it's a flawed model. Uh, it's not going to be fixed up in this uh, tax debate, but it's interesting now that you're reading the press talking about franking as an issue in Australia. And the ramifications of franking are much sig more significant than just giving back franking credits and the nonsense about that if we do away with it, it's a, we're doing away with double taxation, that's rubbish. I mean, if we had a tax paid dividend going to shareholders, which was tax free in, in the hands of shareholders because it's tax being paid on it, that gets rid of, rid of double taxation. Franking can create zero taxation and serious problems for the country. I should do. I mean, we even had United Group yesterday, no dividend, share price up. I mean, I think someone needs to talk to boards of directors and say it's not about just growing dividends short term or maintaining dividends which can't be sustainable. It's about presenting a company, positioning it for growth and funded growth. So the, co the company itself generates internal cash which is reinvested. It's distributed to shareholders fairly and reinvested back into the business to grow. Those sort of companies will get marked up. Now, yes, we are seeing middle, middle Australian market rallying hard because there's growth there and probably greater growth than the top end of the market. But my comment is what price growth, okay? So a lot of these companies are overpriced for the growth potential, you know, and their growth will slow at some point. The bigger companies will be methodical, typical blue chips, they'll just grow and grow. And remember, they've got the tailwind of population growth. You know, Australia's got this massive population growth, which when you think about it, from a Woolies or Coles perspective, even if Audi grabs 10% of the market, you know, this, the market itself is growing three, 4% per annum. You know, so there's enough for everyone. Just manage your business correctly and just deploy your capital sensibly. That's all you have to do.